Hello, my beautiful beings, my beautiful darlings. Welcome to my soul space with me, Nikki Allen. Welcome to all you wonderful newbies. If you've just found me here on this beautiful podcast channel and hello, hey, love you to all my wonderful people, both in the UK and across the pond throughout the world. <laughs> and thank you for being here and listening to each podcast. Please let me know what you'd like for me to discuss. Please let me know if you're loving what you're hearing. And without further ado, I suggest we get on and talk about the next thing that comes into my soul that I want to share with you. This is the most organic channel you're ever going to experience. I never know what I'm going to talk about next, which I find really exciting. I kind of think I'm channeling it from some different realm, whether it be the angel realms, the spirit world, the universe. But you know what? I keep it real. I keep it simple. And I'd love for you to come along and just plug in and listen away. On this show now, we're going to be talking about what I ended on the last show, which is about spirit guides. Whoa, there's a whole conundrum to do with spirit guides. I'm going to tell you how I first got introduced to mine. Well, I didn't really get introduced, to be fair. What happened was, was I was most probably in my 20s when it started becoming quite strong. Um, I have to say, when I first started going to I'm going, to, I'm going to take you right back, right? Because as I always say, you know, people say, oh, Nikki Allen, you keep it really real. And I'm going to because I thought spirit guides were a bit pants to begin with. Do you know, like a fairy godmother or something? And I basically <laughs> went to the, watch these mediums, right? And there's this bird. Oh, my God. I'm not even going to lie. I When I went into the place and she was like, oh, I've dressed like a gypsy today because my gypsy guide is working with me. And I thought, oh, hell no, this is just a load of pants. Um, and then another time I saw her, she was dressed like a, I don't know, all in black um, with my pirate guide. And I'm like, oh, no. So I kind of got a bit put off with guides. Anyway, I don't know if this is the same with everybody, um, but I, I I have the most incredible recurring dreams. Some of them are messages from the spirit world. Some are from my childhood that just recur. Some are from my old job as a police officer. But the one, I had a few of them when I was in my teens and just put it down to nothing. But where, after my nan died, when I was about 23, I think it was, 24, I... Um, started getting really strong prolific dreams now i'd already started doing readings for people at night so i was a copper during the day <laughs> i was policing the uk during the day and i was um doing like psychic parties and readings for people of the night as a little sideline most of it i kind of just did for nothing you know i just was so enthralled by the fact that i could say things see things feel things taste smell sense and then people are going oh my god yeah that's my nan i'm like holy shit this is great so i loved giving do you know what i mean and uh i so when this spirit guy thing was coming about i just thought oh, no nah, i'm not really interested i don't want to dress as a gypsy <laughs> or wear black so anyway after my nan died she came and saw me normal two-day rule as you'll know from other podcasts two-day rule my family come down so she all right love i'm okay i'm up i'm up and she was okay. Now, what happened then, what followed then was that I kept getting dreams of me going to see my nan and my dad, who's past the spirit world, right? And I would always go on a boat. And this is why I've done that guided meditation, um, visiting loved ones in heaven on a boat to an island, because that's what I used to do. So all my guided meditations I provide for you, like on my website, they are all what I've been shown in my past and think I'm going to share it with you. Just like all my journals that I share with you. Everything I create for you is what I've been taught or shown or thought that would be really handy for spiritual development. OK, so I go on this boat, go to this island and it's a recurring dream nearly every night. And I go to this hut right, and it's on the side of this like moss covered, heather covered mountain. And I look I, I go into this hut and there's this like if any of you of my era um, <laughs> you think I was in my 30s because I look so wonderful 52 now but my era was Steptoe do you remember Steptoe especially in the UK peeps the show Steptoe Steptoe was basically like an eh, miserable old man who worked at a scrapyard with his son and he had this like grey graying hair hardly any teeth and he was just like well, he just looked rather rotten, shall we say. 
And I used to walk into this hut and there was this big fire, right, and there was this bloke sitting there looking at me with this grey hair, this old wizened bloke in this brown robe with like a rope going around his waist. And I'm like, oh, my God, who are you? And I felt a bit, you know, I was a bit of a snob. I'm not going to lie. I thought, oh, my God, what are you doing here, love? And then I'd see my nan sitting on a chair and then my dad and I'd go straight to them right and then any pets that were about they would come around and then other family members but predominantly it was my nan and my dad and they would tell me things for the future or they would just sit there and cuddle and laugh or whatever and there was all this always this man in the corner and it never occurred to me to actually approach him I just thought what are you doing here and I thought because it was a recurring dream it was just my mind was creating him, if that makes sense. Like, you know, my mind's, oh, there's the dream of Nan and Dad. And, oh, yeah, there's the man. It just felt like it was routinely placed in my head. So I, t- I totally ignored him. Oh, my God, how could I have no- ignored him? I feel so shameful now. So I ignored him. And it wasn't until 10 years later when I got retired from the police service um, with a medical um, back injury on duty, I basically went out to my back garden it was a beautiful summer's day and I I thought I'm just going to lay back and I thought I'm going to do a cheeky little meditation I am I'm going to be one of those good mediums those very good prolific mediums who meditate every day it's hard work meditating isn't it I'm not going to lie and I thought oh no I'm going to be very good to myself I'm going to meditate and straight away it was boiling hot day and but straight away I was freezing cold and I heard water drip in and I realized I've been taken to another frequency another dimension straight away within seconds and um I'm not going to go too much into this because I do want to do a separate podcast at some point about reincarnation um because this is huge what I'm about to share with you and it's a bit of a spoiler because it is in my book um I think it's me myself and I so I basically find myself in a cave and then this rock grinds across opening this doorway and I walk out into the heat and there's all these cypress trees and there's this beautiful man and then I think oh he's not that beautiful oh my god I know who he is and he puts his hood down and it's the bloke I've been ignoring year after year and I'm like oh so I'm now faced with him do you know if you see someone in the high street and you think, oh, my, don't look, don't look, don't look, John, don't look, John, she's over there. And then you bump into her and she knows you've seen her and you're like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. Oh, I didn't see you. And you know she did see you. So I've gone, oh, hi. And I'm about to, like, do the biggest apology of my life, but he doesn't care. He just comes up to me, holds my shoulders and says, welcome, Mary. You're now in Trastevere, Rome. As I say, I'm going to skirt over this because this deserves a whole podcast in itself about reincarnation and previous lives. Um, and so I then get taken through 1452 Trastevere, Rome with my guide, who's called Julianus. Long story short, I've been back twice and found where he come from and everything he tells me on how we met in a previous life was completely true. It blew me away. As I say, I'll give you the full story in another show. So I now had this guide, Julianus, there with me, this monk, um, a St. Franciscan monk. And I'm thinking, I'm not holy at all. Obviously, you know, religion to me is a man-made concept. And I've got this monk on my hands and I always wondered why... I loved churches, the smell of frankincense, the smell of incense. And I've just got this massive thing about sitting in churches. And I kind of think, wow, yeah, I, you know, this is most probably why I um, have this connection. So Julianus was just like, you know, bopping around now and then he'd come through. He was very, very um, strong and very, very impatient man. He, you know, if someone was asking a question because I started channeling him, he would be very, oh, for goodness sake, just listen to me. You know, he's very much like that in the early days. I then, this is another spoiler as well for my other book, Rise and Fall. Um, then I went into a circle just after I got retired from the police service. So these, I kind of got introduced to my guides really early on. Um, as soon as I really was thrown into the dark side, no, I'm joking, thrown into full time mediumship. So I was in a circle and this lady, I've never been in a circle before, as I've said before, you know, it's like a busman's holiday. I'd grown up with psychics and healers and mediums all around me. So why would I go and develop it? 
no. But then they forced me into it. So, yes, I was in a circle. And she said, after the meditation, went, oh, I've just seen your guide. His name's Hammerhawk. And he's standing very tall with most gorgeous green eyes with a red tip feather. And um, she said, you really need to start connecting with him. He connects around the healing essence of you. So I later found out that Julianus was my soul guide, who was the main man who had my life print. Uh, my life plan if you like up in the spirit world again that's for another podcast there's so many i need to do darlings and he kind of keeps me on my tracks you know he keeps me adhering to my life plan as best he can and he's my main guide then we have khan and i thought oh my god it's a native american you're having a laugh and lots of people i remember um the medium who I know, Gordon, um, Gordon Smith, you most of you heard of him. And he said, uh, <laughs> we must all be cowboys because all of these mediums have got bloody um, Native Americans as guides. And um, it's true. I thought, oh, God, I'm going to say, oh, yes, I've got a Native American guide. So anyway, um, I went, oh, thank you very much. Anyway, I did end up doing a meditation and he introduced himself as Khan, saying that he was my dad. He then took me through a whole process of where I was killed by the white man taking our land, Navajos, um, in Arizona. And he then used to call me Ankala, which I later found out meant daughter. And again, you know, everything he showed me concerning my funeral, the process the Navajos do, it was all completely um, recordable and I Googled it and it all came true. So we then had Khan. About a week later from this circle, I went to what I call Hogwarts, which is the Arthur Finley College for Psychic Studies, which is a beautiful, beautiful manor house set in Stansted in Essex in the UK. And people come from all over the world to develop their abilities and go on various spiritual development classes. Um, and I was there. And this is, <laughs> I love this. This is a really funny part of my book where I talk about the live, you've got to read it. To re it's just so funny. The live um, girl that I shared a room with who gave me a drawing. And the drawing was of this stunning looking man with the most brightest green eyes with a red tip feather. And she goes, this is your guide. He came to me. His name's Hamhawk. And I thought, oh, my God, couldn't believe it. So he then, you know, literally knew that I would be inquisitive, knew that I was a bit sceptical on guides because what I'd seen in the churches, no disrespect to other mediums, but some of them were like, oh, my God, with their guides. And you know, make them so animated, these guides, and yet they really are quite, they don't like the limelight. They're just there to be with you, warn you, guide you, and make sure that you're doing the best you can in this human experience. So here's my third guide, Catherine. So now I've got under my belt. I'm like collecting them. I'm collecting them like football cards. And so <laughs> I've, this is literally in the space of, six months seven months they literally delivered themselves right within six seven months so the next so i've had i've obviously had um khan come and introduce himself oh my god he's so gorgeous not even funny and he's to do with healing my soul my healing energy how i can also channel healing energy to other people blah blah blah, blah. so he's always there he also helped me if you remember um in one of my i think it was my last podcast he um helped me get to the acacia records so he's all to do with healing all that kind of stuff so i got him so then what happens is as i go to another course in hogwarts arthur finney college and I'm standing there and we're doing this trance dance. And so I see Khan and I find out that I have this spirit animal totem, a wolf. And I thought, my God, I wonder why I kept seeing wolf as a kid, dreaming of him and being obsessed with him. So that I thought, well, that's interesting. That's another podcast as well, power animals. Anywho, after that, we then had to do a class where I had to do a psychic readings for people in front of me, right? Now, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I had pe one person after another sit in front of me and they're saying, right, no spirit contact. You have to read the soul of the person in front of you. Oh, my God. It wasn't even going to happen. Absolutely not. It just 
oh, I was so upset and so frustrated because I could not get a single thing. Everything that I picked up on or tried to visualise in my head, the person in front of me said no. To my shame, I ended up running out of the class because I thought I'm crap. I'm making it all up on rubbish. And I could not connect with a soul in front of me. This, and this is where I need to say about the difference between psychics and mediums. Psychics are people that connect with the soul in front of them. OK, and they can use divinatory tools to also get um, a storyline or a narrative running with that soul, either, you know, tarot cards, um, crystal balls, that kind of thing, psychometry, taking your jewellery. So they are only linking to your energy so they can tell you about your past, present and future. OK, however, mediums channel a different source of information being your spirit loved one an angel or you know um a spirit guide so our source of information comes from a person so let's just say spirit that has come from someone that connects with the recipient in front of them okay that's the source a psychic medium that's why i give myself that title i can do both thank god after my third guide turned up so um not all psychics are mediums, but I would say good, genuine, sound mediums are all psychic as well. So that gives us the ability that if your granddad said, oh, she's having a bad time, and I go, really? And then his energy stops. I'll look into the soul person and go, oh, my God, you've just, you know, um, lost a load of money, haven't you, love? You know, so I can go up and down very easy into different frequencies. But I couldn't do it at this point. So I've gone upstairs like a big child thinking, I'm rubbish. I can't even read someone in front of me. What's it all about? And then I just said, please, can someone just come and help me? I just need to know how to link with people in front of me. The following day in the next class, we do a meditation and this beautiful woman, again, I'm, it's going to be UK, I'm afraid. But do you remember the Scottish widow advert with the beautiful woman with the black cape and the black hood? her right this she rocks up looking like Catherine zeta jones stunning i might add and she literally looks at me and smiles she pulls she takes the hood off of her um, head and she holds a palm up in front of her face and it's got rune rune bones like runes like but they're like made of bone and she blows them i can see all the symbols on them i wrote them in my soul journal years ago and she blew them, and as they, they as they went up in the air, they turned into white doves. It was just incredible, and I completely forgot to put this in my book um, because when I came out of this meditation, she, I heard, you've now got the gift of prophecy and to see other souls, and I'm like, oh, really? So I'm then smashing it. I am doing readings for everybody in the bar, in my room, I'm loving it because I've now been given access to this frequency of souls on the planet. I go out elated that night and just have a breath of fresh air. And what flies past me? I couldn't say it said dove. It was a white pigeon. And I'm like, that is good enough for me. Thank you very much. And so I then had these three guides. I've had one other pop in. Um, sorry, two others, a Chinese, Tibetan no, Tibetan, Chinese, and um, a bloke that looked a bit like a fairy elemental come in for a few um, little upgrades that I needed. I call them upgrades. And then I've never seen them since. So that's my experience. Now, let me take you to students, people that I've taught over the 30 years that I've been doing this. And because they see people like me who have got guides very easily they said the names they've told us you know it's like Catherine she's a Celtic um, girl she sometimes looks like a hag which really scared me when I first saw her like it and she takes me back to a lifetime of when she was doing apocryphy and herbal herb, herb stuff and all that kind of stuff and luckily she escaped the witch inquisitions um and so she she kind of does all my prophecy and gives me tinctures and all sorts of things. She's she's like a witchy woo. I love her. Hello, my darlings. Your wish is my command, and most of your wishes come out in fruition at my shop at nickyown.co.uk. I think about what you may need to help your spiritual development. So I have a 10-hour tarot course for you. 
QR tarot cards where you can just ding the back of those cards and get the definitions. I have a multitude of guided meditations to help you get up to the different frequencies, whether it's the angel realm or it's heaven or you even want to visit a pet. I also have got some wonderful books there that I really hope you'll enjoy. And there's much more. So just go on over and have a look. And please, if you're enjoying these podcasts, it would be really gorgeous if you could leave us a wonderful review just to let us know that you're enjoying the content. When you um, come to me, you all want to know your guides' names. You all want to know that you've got your guides. Of course we do. We all want to know where they're from. We all want to know, you know, what country they're from. She's from Cornwall. That's why I'm so connected with Cornwall. Um, And you just want to know everything about them. And when you don't get that, when you don't get that guide rock up and say, hey, my name's Juliana. I'm from Chesterfield Road, 1452. You're like, oh, I'm rubbish, I'm rubbish. Please don't do that to yourselves. Your guide is one of the biggest questions I get asked. Why can't I see my guide? How do I not know them? Does it mean I'm not ready? La, 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 la. They will introduce themselves to you when the time is right. They are there, trust me, just like the angel realms. They're there giving you thoughts, inspiration, change direction in your life. They're they're, they're putting all this kind of stuff into your energy without you even knowing. You could be the most atheist person sitting there. You could be the most biggest skeptic in the world. We've all got guides. Oh, yes, we have. Again, do you remember what I said about plugging in the universe in a previous podcast? It's about plugging into your guide. So please don't put yourself under pressure. The guides will know when to introduce themselves to you. Okay, so, you know, by all means, try guided meditations, meeting your guides. I've got one. I'm just about to create a new one, uh, meeting your guardian angel soon, where you can get taken into that frequency and assist your meeting your guides. It doesn't matter if you know their name or not. It doesn't matter if you know what they look like or not. It doesn't matter if you um, don't know where they've come from, what lifetime it is. It does not matter. The fact is, is that if you want to start, you know, creating a relationship with your guide, then you just need to meditate. Meditation is the biggest key to spiritual development. I kid you not. I I literally, you can go to as many classes as you want. You can pay all the money that some of these people like charge you. But what you really need to do is meditate. That's how I developed my relationship with all three of my guides. I didn't command their presence. I just started to follow a routine, go into that old hut where I ignored Julianis for about 10 years. And I started going to the hut and then I thought, I'm going to create this for other people. And Julianis actually said to me once in a session when I was with about 30 odd students, um, this is what you need to tell them. And this is how they'll find their guide. So I obviously created the guided meditation. As I say, there's loads of them about. It's a very personal and intimate journey that you'll have with a guide. And the more that you meditate and the more you go up to that frequency where your guides hang out, if you like, it's like tuning into a radio station. And as I say, people say, well, how do I do that? Literally, the easiest thing, if you find it hard to meditate, is follow a guided meditation. And just go up and see if they're there. And if they are there, sit with them. And you'll learn eventually to ask questions as well. And you'll get more confident the more you do it. So I used to ask questions and they knew me inside out. So I'd say, look, you know, I'm a bit sceptical about all this. Even now, sometimes I think, "Mm, did that really happen? Of course it did. And I say things like, you know, what's coming up for me? And they would tell me, oh, sometimes they'll bring an angel in and say, go and do the angel cards now. And this is what cards will come up for you. And I'll do the angel cards and they'll be the cards that came up. They, they created the most amazing synchronicities and signs to confirm that they were real and that they were there guiding me, which I found so magical. And that's why I encourage everybody, everybody that sends me emails and messages to literally get on the meditation and it doesn't have to be you sitting, laying out ooms, you know, by a lily pad or <laughs> you know, by chakra poster. And it literally is just get the guided meditation or go into meditation space and say, I wish to speak with one of my guides. It's that simple. By all means, if you want things that will help you to get into that focus state, amethyst, there are many 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 stones that can help you but with me if I really want to get in and get a question answered or I want to go on a really deep 
lesson based meditation i get an amethyst stone amethyst stones are the best go to for any learning advanced empath spiritual person that really wants to develop and and connect back into the universe and start learning how to get into the different frequencies i.e angel realm spirit world blah 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 the amethyst stone helps us to focus our third eye which is a chakra oh there's another podcast discussing chakras the third eye which is the pineal gland and that is literally amplifies everything that we see in our mind so just let me show you this as a very simple way forward if who's going to know all this do you know I, I did this right i did this in a workshop i said everybody picture elvis in their head right and then three people put hands up and goes sorry who's elvis who is elvis oh my days they were so young i think they were like 18 and 19 i'm like you are got to be kidding me so um what can we do that everybody all right let's right let's do this right everybody kind of knows what jesus looks like well you know what mankind has created as an image of jesus right so let's just say it's him and i want you to form in your mind a picture of jesus so let's have him in a white robe let's just say he's standing on mount sinai right so he's standing there with his hands open his arms open talking to you with his beard in his white robe with his long hair arms wide open standing there you can even add so i've just added some sandals on yeah i've added some stuff on <laughs> i used to i used to call them jesus creepers so, well you know well that's what they are sandals on him he's standing on i see him in my head now very easily and i'm very lucky because i have superbly refined clairvoyance from my generations before me it's there naturally it always has been so i'm now picturing jesus standing there with his arms open and i'm picturing now with his beautiful beard his blue eyes his hair and by the way i see him as a superb medium seer and healer of his time and i'm going to end it there because i don't want to get on a religion soapbox but try and see can you see that if you can see that in your mind and you've created that in your mind right now then you've got a great great up on clairvoyance straight away so that means that when you go into meditation every color every thought sorry every sight every shadow every image note it down in a, in a journal because it will mostly be your guides even if you can't see them giving you information to help you they are your lifeline who's seen hunger games come on most people have seen the film hunger games right and you know they've got all of the audience they're all like sponsoring a certain person trying to stay alive in the dome and they send them little parcels down to help them don't they right another great analogy using a film and that's what they do the guides our guides sit there and go oh my god what's she doing now because remember we have free will and that free will can get us into some right tight spaces i'll tell you that now so now and then they'll send a little package or they'll send a little a little oh swerve that one it's not right so they'll either send you a big bolt into your intuition to say oh my god don't go there don't do that and you just know even though it looks brilliant perhaps it's a new job loads of money get a free house get this get that but your gut's saying oh don't go there don't go there girlfriend boyfriend don't do it and in the end most of us because of our ego we end up jumping in and going for it um and our guides must go oh my god what can we do now because they've made this decision it is the biggest worst mistake of their lives so you end up in this like perhaps really bad job right and it's really crap and you're not looked after really it was all a load of rubbish there's you know small print for the house that you're supposed to have got and you're really in the crap and you're really miserable and so the guides will go oh my god right her free will was taken off a path what are we going to do do you know what let's just make sure that she doesn't get any money she gets into debt goes bankrupt so you're going through this as a human thinking oh my god i'm not being looked after they are they're just bringing you back to where you should have been because you made a stupid decision out of ego. Does that make sense? And so they gave you that bolt of intuition to guide you, to keep you on your path. And so it's very much like what happened with me. When I first spoke to Julianus, again, I think that's in my first book. When I spoke to Julianus, it was really, I, I didn't speak to him. I hated them with vengeance when I was five years in bed. 
And one day, one of my friends come and drove me to um, a healing session, a drum healing session. Um, she got me out of my bed and said, come on, you're going to this drum healing. Like I wanted to be there, like hell. So I laid down. I was angry. I was resentful. And I thought it was a load of old shite. I'm not going to lie. And I say it as it is, as you most probably know by now. If you don't, you better get used to it. <laughs> right. So I'm laying there, hating the world. I've been laying in bed for a couple of years, just wanting to die basically and I'm laying there and this drum starts I think what a load of old crap banging the drum as if that's going to do anything surrounded by crystals um especially amethyst because it's also good for grief as well google it google amethyst get yourself something on a bit of jewelry or a stone to put in your bra if you're a girly um shouldn't say that now just if you're a boy as well um and just or have a big lump next to you I have amethyst all over my house okay so I had all of this around me and then suddenly, boof, it's like I've been given. Do you know when you go under with an anaesthetic? I'm telling you, I was pulled under so quick, it was ridiculous, right? And I had all these angel forms. I couldn't sit. I just knew they were angels. I could feel their presence, white robes, and I could feel them going, mm, and there's a seraphim I didn't realise at the time. They were all around me, right? And I'm thinking, you make it up, you make it up. And then Julie Alice was suddenly there, and he leant over me, and the kindness and love and compassion is indescribable feeling a bit emotional and um you'll learn that as well oh my god i get so emotional and he put his hands and this is why i'm telling you why i know about them helping us with free will when we make the wrong decisions for ego because he held my held my face and he said, my darling, darling child, he said, Nicola, he calls me Nicola as well. Oh, my God, how he gets away with it, I don't even know. Same as my granddad. And he said, my darling child, do you honestly think we would have allowed you to put you through this pain? Now, what he meant was, is I was with the wrong partner. I wasn't living my spiritual life for myself. I was jumping from um, theatre to theatre, touring. I was on the television. I was writing in the magazines. I gave myself no time to absorb the magic of what I was really doing. I just wanted to give. I was in the wrong space because I was people pleasing. And I really did want to just give and make everybody else better, which is the massive, massive trait of an empath. All we want to do is help everybody and, and save everybody else. And I remember crying my heart out saying, why has this happened to me? Why has this happened to me? And he said, my child, you walked yourself into a forest way off your path. We're just trying to get you back. And he showed me my true path, which I should have taken, or I should have said no. There are many times in my professional life, especially when I was working with Colin Fry, and I was getting into this big Nicky Allen thing, which I really wasn't comfortable with. I didn't like it. Being told to change my voice, my teeth, my hair, my accent, lose weight. And it was all getting so TV celebrity. I just hated it. I hated it. And it just threw me into a whirlwind of nonsense. And that took me into a big dark, deep forest and they showed me that I had to get back to that path but before they did that he said that's why we gave you your tower moment he knew that I understood what a tower moment meant the road accident I had put me on a path that despite the hell it put me through for five years has made me one of the most calmest most whole most self-love person I've ever been due to my trauma um, and my abuse during my adolescence I kind of learned to hate myself like the haters and the abusers did around me so I had all these demons that were telling me I wasn't good enough and despite the fact that I did I was completely real completely true and did everything I could for the public I just felt a bit like Elvis, you know, he just felt like he had to keep going on and on and on. I wasn't eating hamburgers or taking drugs, so I'm not. Gonna... But do you know what? I just felt this need that everybody needed to have me. It was ridiculous. And as I said, I was with the wrong partner, and it was just all so wrong. It was all material orientated, and I, I hated it. But ha but I felt that I needed to go with it. 
and so that's where I went wrong. So they get, they gave me the road accident and it, and I lost my home. I lost everything. I had two dustbin bags, my two dogs. You know the story if you've read my book, me, myself and I. And I just literally was, was stripped bare. And he said, they are the brambles that we've had to take you through. They are all of the woods, the denseness, the harshness that you've had to go through so we can get you back on a point of recovery and thriving again you're on the wrong energy we're going to put you back on the right one and despite the pain the anger oh my god it was horrific the dark abyss of complete devastation of feeling i've been forsaken by everything esoteric and celestial i then found myself being brought back um and then i remember i remember the day when i was walking along a path in meditation again because I thought I might as well go back up there again after the five years. And I remember seeing Julianus, Chris, um, Catherine and Khan walking me, holding me, walking along this path. I knew I was back. And so he'd said all this during this, this time that I was getting this drum healing. And he said, that is why this has happened. We had to shift your path in a dramatic way because you were going so far off of it. And so a little light shined then, and it wasn't too far after that that I surrendered and, and came back into my own and started to work on my recovery and my shadow work, um, which is getting rid of your demons, getting rid of the darkness in your soul, getting rid of your ego that makes you want to do the wrong things in life. And he was so right. And, you know, I remember asking him, laying there, when am I going to get my energy back? Because I literally couldn't get my head off the pillow. I couldn't take myself to the toilet. I was incontinent. I was my muscle mass and my my strength had completely left me in every way, physical, mental, spiritual. And he said, we have the coals, but they're not burning hard enough or hot, or hot enough. But we will let you know when you're ready. And he left me and then I was surrounded by these angels. And then I realised in that moment in time and subsequent months to come, that's what our guides are there for. They don't tell us, command us or deem what we have to do like religion does. You have to read the Bible. You have to adhere to this. You can't sin. This is the you know the ramifications of your sinful behaviour. They let us go. They let us go on this free will trip on our human experience and then go, oh, my God, she's gone wrong again. And so intuition is a massive part of this because your intuition is your guide's compass saying, don't do this. It's not going to work. How many times have you felt something's wrong, but you've gone with it and gone, I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have done it, but you still did it. Oh, my God, I've done it so many times. So they're there just like the angel realms are. But that's, again, another podcast for you, darlings. They're there to just not babysit you, because that sounds quite, no, that's that's not the right word. They're there to just watch, keep, love, and guide you along this path full of obstacles. And, you know, we're going to get obstacles. And we're not going to get obstacles just because we made the wrong decision, they just come because that's part of life. We might have even asked for them before we come down here. And so they say, that's okay. I've got you. I've got you back. Let's just keep doing this thing and trust me. And that's what I do. I trust them implicitly. And as I've said before, there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't acknowledge one or three of them to say, thank you. Thank you for being there. Half the time, don't get me wrong, half the time I've got no clue if they're with me or not. I've got absolutely no clue. I just trust the process. I trust they're there. And no matter what happens in my life, whether it's a triumph or it's a failure, I know they're there. They're going to pick up the pieces or they're going to make it even more magnificent because I've made the right decision. So what I always say and what I'm saying to you now is if you want to develop a close relationship with your guides, by all means, go to workshops, you know, how to how to incorporate um, guides into your life, how to develop your guide relationship. I'm telling you now, you can do it just by doing a guided meditation and getting there yourself. Because the more you do that and the more you go up and meet them, the more they will show you. Remember, they don't force themselves on you all the time. They'll dig you out and they'll steer you where you need to go. 
but most of the time they're just there waiting for you to connect to them. So write that letter, whether it's writing an invocation, writing your intention in your soul guide, soul journal. Say to them, I really need you here. I'd like to you know, get to know you now. Start a circle, start a meditation session, whatever it is that you, you, know, you, need, you feel you need to do. But by getting that relationship with your guides, it will be a game changer, I promise you. Because when you know who they are, or even if you just know they're around you, it makes everything so much easier. And always remember, you don't need to know who they are or what they look like. Just trust they're there and speak to them. You could be speaking into out into the darkness in your meditation for months, days, years. It doesn't matter. Just know they're hearing you and they're going to help you. That's all I can say to you. So I hope you've enjoyed this little input with me and my guides. And I hope that I've given you a few little tips just to help you visualize and connect with them. It's really, really simple. Don't overthink it. Send the intention. Get meditating. Pick the right classes and workshops for you and add to your itinerary of how you can get a more special connection with your guide or guides. And just remember, there's no number limit here you can have one you can have 10 i don't know how i deal with 10 three is enough for me and it's the magic number for me as well angel number so literally go with the flow just chill out on it and let it be and let them into your lives i've enjoyed talking about this today and i really hope you have i'd love to hear your feedback on these podcasts especially this one because soul guides to me are just so special so just remember, think good things, create good things, and those good things will come back to you a hundredfold. Until the next time, may those guides bless you always. Take care now.